As someone who loves everything and all things horror related and all of the countless horror stories I've read and all of the countless horror movies that I've watched, there is one creature that always interests me more than a lot of them. And that is the urban legend named Krasu. So that's what we're going to be doing here tonight. For tonight's episode, we're going to be taking a deeper look into the urban legend of Krasu and seeing exactly what is she all about. If you guys do enjoy this video by the end of it and you would love to see more urban legends here on HBTH, make sure to like and share the video and put in the comment section for what episode you would like to see here next on HBTH. And with that being said, thank you all so much for tuning in to this latest episode of HBTH. And as always, I hope you all enjoy the video. The Krasu or known as in Cambodia as Krasu, is a nocturnal female spirit in Southeast Asian folklore. It manifests itself as a woman, usually young and beautiful, with her eternal organs hanging down from the neck, trailing below the head. According to Thai residents, the Krasu consists of a floating head accompanied by a will-o'-wisp kind of luminescent glow. The explanations attempted about the origin of the glow include the presence of methane in marshy areas. The Krasu is often said to live in the same area as Crane, a male spirit of the Thai folklore. This spirit moves about by hovering in the air above the ground, for it has no lower body. The throat may be represented in different ways, either as only the trachea or with the whole neck. The organs below the head usually include the heart and stomach with a length of intestine, the intestinal tract emphasizing the ghost's voracious nature. In a recent movie, Krasu Valentine, this ghost is represented with more internal organs, such as lungs and liver, but much reduced in size and anatomically out of proportion with the head. The viscera are sometimes represented freshly dabbed with blood, as well as glowing. In contemporary representations, her teeth often include pointy fangs in vampire fashion. In the movie Ghost of Guts Eater, she has a halo around her head. Krasu has been the subject of a number of movies in the region, including My Mother is Arb, also known as Krasu Mom. Krasu is a belief shared across Southeast Asia. As such, its origin is difficult to verify. However, the inception of this demon is likely to be based on a folklore. In Thailand, Krasu is believed to be a cursed individual, usually a female, who engaged in various sins and fraudulent conducts during her previous life. After she dies, her sins cause her to be reborn as Krasu, that has to live off wasted, uncooked, or rotten food. In recent times, the Thai entertainment industry had fictionalized the origin of Krasu as a cursed ancient princess, as in the movie Demonic Beauty. This depiction is however merely an attempt to put a royal touch or to reinvent a mythical beginning to a well-known story of an essentially folk origin for strictly entertainment and commercial purposes. One critic notes that the director of Demonic Beauty probably just wanted to depict Krasu as an evil and an alien demon originating from the witchcraft and black magic of a foreign Cambodian pagan culture, which is ultimately subdued and defeated by the more enlightened Buddhist culture of Thailand. There are other oral traditions that say that this spirit was formerly a rich lady that had a length of black gauze or ribbon tied around her neck as protection from the sunshine. This woman was then possessed by an evil spirit and was cursed to become a Krasu. Other popular legends claim the origin of the spirit may have been a woman trying to learn black magic that made a mistake or used the wrong spell so that her head and body became separated. Past sins are also related to the transmission of the Krasu curse. Women who aborted or killed someone in a previous life will become a Krasu as punishment. Other folk stories talk about a person being cursed to become a Krasu after having consumed food and drink contaminated with a Krasu's saliva or flesh. Popular imagination also claims that the transformation into a Krasu is largely restricted to the relatives of women practicing witchcraft, especially their daughters or granddaughters. Often women acting strange in the community are suspected of becoming nightly a Krasu by other members of the village. Description in Thai Folklore The Krasu is under a curse that makes it ever hungry and always active in the night when it goes out hunting to satisfy its gluttony, seeking blood to drink or raw flesh to devour. 
It may attack cattle or chicken in the darkness, drinking their blood and eating their internal organs. It may also prey on pieces of cattle, such as water buffalo, that have died of other causes during the night. If blood is not available, the Kusu may eat feces. Clothes left outside will be found soiled with blood and excrement in the morning, allegedly after she had wiped her mouth. Therefore, villagers would not leave clothes hanging to dry outside during the night hours. The Kusu also preys on pregnant women in their homes just before or after the childbirth. It hovers around the house of the pregnant woman, uttering sharp cries to instill fear. It uses its very long tongue to reach the fetus or its placenta within the womb. This habit, among other unmentionable things that this spirit does, is believed to be the cause of many diseases infecting women mainly in royal areas during their pregnancy. In some cases, it may catch the unborn child and use its sharp teeth to devour it. In order to protect pregnant women from becoming victims before delivery, their relatives place thorny branches around the house. This improvised thorny fence discourages the Kursu from coming to suck the blood and causing other suffering to the pregnant lady within the house. After delivery, the woman's relatives must take the cut placenta far away for burial to hide it from the Kursu. There is the belief that if the placenta is buried deep enough, the spirit cannot find it. The Kursu hides the headless body from which it originates in a quiet place because it needs to rejoin it before daybreak living like a normal person during the day, although having a sleepy look. To crush the still headless body of the Kursu is fatal to the spirit. The flying head will return after hunting but rejoin with the wrong body, which will lead it to suffer torment until death. The Kursu will also die if its intestines get cut off or if the body disappears or gets hidden by someone. Some folk beliefs hold that the creature can be destroyed by burning it. The main foes of the Kursu are mobs of angry villagers carrying torches and machetes. They may catch the Kursu and kill it or watch where she goes before dawn and destroy her body. There is a legend said that the people who are wounded should be aware of the Kursu because it can smell the blood and will come to eat the blood at night when people fall asleep. However, there are ways to prevent the Kursu from coming inside the house. House owners usually build spiky fences or grow spiky bamboo to protect themselves from the Kursu. Kursu was scared of spiky things because its intestine might get stuck and it could not escape.